let's have a look at some of the vocabulary around experiments. So the first one here, and I've done these just in alphabetical order, the first one is bias. So when I'm talking about bias, that means I'm favouring one thing over another, or I'm favouring a person over another, or a treatment over another. So I might say, for example, I love Nike, but I hate Adidas. That's a bias. I'm, I'm more likely to choose one than another. Okay, so when we're designing experiments, we don't want any bias. We want our experiments to be free from bias. Okay, next one, cause. So cause is what happens. So I do this and something happens as a result of that. So for example, the little, as you can see in the little picture there, giving the injection, that's the cause. The effect is that the little boy's crying. Okay, so these are cause and effect, and when we're dealing with experiments, we'll come across this idea of cause and effect a lot more. Context. Context is the situation. So is it um, a study on teenagers looking at using their phone? Is it a study on adults looking at their hair? What is it the context about? Control group. So when we design an experiment, we have two groups. We have a control group and a treatment group. And so the control group is the group that gets the standard of care. Okay. So if I was doing a new cancer drug trial, then the control group would be the ones getting the current treatment for that cancer. And my treatment group would be the ones that get a new drug. And I want to compare the two. So it might be that they get nothing, or it might be that they get the standard of care. Um, the next one, that word effect, so that's your outcome. So the injection causes the boy to cry, the crying is the effect of it. So that's, that's what we're measuring, is that response variable. So an experiment, so an experiment, and we'll look at this, what a statistical experiment is, and that's got a very specific definition, and we'll look at that over the next few videos. Our experimental group or treatment group, it's usually called the treatment group, but can be either. And so this is a group of participants. Um, so the, the group is the people themselves who are receiving the treatment. My experimental unit or my participant, that is the person. So an experimental unit, one person, or a participant, one person. So it's one person that is involved in this experiment. The experimenter, that's the person in charge, but the one actually carrying out the experiment. So sometimes the experimenter will be your teacher because they'll be in charge of it. And when it comes to the assessment, you will be in charge of it. You will be the experimenter. Hypothesis, so this is your prediction or your expectation. So it's before you actually carry out the experiment, what do you think will happen? So I think that if I punch somebody in the face, they will probably react and get angry at me. So there's my hypothesis. And I want to be able to explain why I think that would happen. I think that they'd probably get angry because it's not a very nice thing to do and it's likely to cause them pain. Okay, so I want to be able to back up my prediction with reasons. And we might be able to get some reasons through research there as well as our own personal knowledge. Independent variable. So the independent variable is the thing that I change. Um, and so there's usually only two values, the placebo and the treatment. Now median, median is always talking about where the middle is. Okay, so the middle value. A paired comparison. So as you can see there in the little picture, there's the picture of the fish before visiting grandma and the picture of the fish after visiting grandma. So a paired comparison, it's the same fish that's had two tests done. We tested the fish before visiting grandma and we tested the fish after visiting grandma. So it's two tests done on the same experimental unit or participant. Placebo. So placebo is what we call, it's a fake treatment. And there's a lot of, been a lot of research about this, that people who go to the doctor feeling unwell, about a third of them will feel better just because they've gone and talked to the doctor and are feeling like they're getting some kind of treatment. Okay, so there's a positive effect 
So if we give them a sugar pill, 33% of people will feel better just going and talking to somebody um, and feeling like they're getting treatment. The other two thirds won't, but we have to take this into account. Random allocation. So this is, as the picture shows, it's a random allocation. We want to choose which participants go in which group. So we've got our two treat groups, we've got our treatment group, and we've got our control group. And we want to randomly allocate each of the participants into one of those two groups. And we want to do it randomly using names in a hat, rolling a dice, any of those kind of things. Our response variable or dependent variable, that is the um, thing that you are observing or measuring. Okay. Um, spread, that's looking at how spread out the data is. And normally we're interested in, at level two, we're interested in the inter interquartile range. Level three, we still want to do interquartile range and we might go into a standard deviation. But the key idea is we're looking at the spread of the data around the middle. A treatment, that is the thing that is being done to the person. So as you can see in the little picture, the person there is getting bandages applied. That is the treatment, that's what's being done to them. Okay. And last but not, not least, variable. So a variable is some kind of measurement or characteristic. So I can measure people's heights and weights and test marks and I can measure or count lots of different things and those would be our variables.